The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 725 The Diplomat's Protection The morning after, everyone found themselves congregating in a hallway in Upper Storm of Keep, waiting for the time to speak with the province's leaders about Yakyakistan and Izvaldi. There was already a consensus about what not to discuss. Crystal stayed off the table, and there were details Valet hadn't even spoken of concerning Stanza. Now, they just needed Valet to arrive. Yeah, Valet greeted, walking up to join the group with a slightly unsteady gait. Her eyes had bags and looked drier than usual, but her fur was freshly washed and groomed, a small, unobtrusive gray coat covering her back, and her mane and tail were carefully done up in a far more presentable style than she usually wore. She smelled like shampoo. Hi, Shinespark greeted, raising an eyebrow. You look different. Rough night. Hey, Sparky. Love you guys, too. Valet stopped, nodding and straightened her shoulders, looking badly in need of a nap. What do you say we got this done fast so we can go home? I really need to get to my room and crash. Felicity came pacing up beside her, nodding approvingly at her appearance. I figured she needed some touching up for presentability, darlings, she answered to everyone's questioning stares. If she went before the generals looking like a bedraggled war refugee, people would instantly think she's trying to bias them and play up sympathy points, and that wouldn't be good for our credibility. So instead, we have a touch of reality, a clear effort to hide it. Even if she really is a mess, Stormhoof and his goons will appreciate the dishonesty. Maple blinked hard. Are you sure? Shinespark and Gerardo both sighed, and Shinespark nodded to the Griffin. In parts of the world, that's how it works, I'm afraid, the Griffin answered. Showing a willingness to play by the game's rules is a sign of good faith, even if the rules are to put on a face. Though you do look like you've had an unpleasant time of things, Valet. Making this quick is what we shall do. Yo, yeah, thanks. Valet stepped up beside him, bone-weary and looking at any minute, like she might fall flat on her prettied-up face. Let's get going. Right this way, Felicity beckoned, humming to herself, and walking with a sway in her step off through the distant castle reaches. Hours later, the five friends plus Felicity exited the war room, crossing several corridors to an outdoor balcony high in the sky. That went much nicer than last time, Maple murmured, the noon sun pleasantly warming her mane. Without Gazelle and Kiro derailing everything, it was like those generals knew what they were doing. Well, that's because they did, Gerardo explained. Recall that last time we were there, the whole meeting was somewhat of a gambit to justify a decision already reached behind closed doors. Stormhoof felt it prudent not to make it too well known that we had a direct line of contact with Einridge, especially given the sensitive nature of our discussions. Gazelle was there, if you noticed. This was just much more the real thing. So was Lord Everlast, Shanpak added. It wasn't just a Stormhoof conference, it concerned the whole Empire. At least, I assumed that's who the Sphinx in Everlast colors was. I didn't like the way he looked at Valet. Uh, Felicity nodded darkly. Lord Gelrich Everlast, you're fortunate not to know him well if you count yourself a friend to Cerosians. He has a wife and two adult children, a son and a daughter. Their dynasty isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and they have a long history in the Empire of being the ones who do the most to oppress us. You think having me up there made it less likely he'll trust us about Yakistan? Valet raised a tired eyebrow. Perhaps, uh, Felicity shrugged, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the whole point of Gazelle wanting you to do that. Discord can be a powerful tool in the right pause. What do they have against bad ponies anyway, Starlight asked from Maple's back. Everlast in particular, Felicity shrugged, think of them like a better off Jaya. Up in Jaya, things are enough of a dump for everyone that squabbling with Cerosian outsiders and refugees becomes a way not to be at the bottom of the social ladder for most griffins and ponies. You take solace from knowing there's at least someone beneath you, though those differences can melt away if you need to work together to survive. Everlast, on the other hoof, 
relies on villainizing Sorosians for strength as well, though they're already strong. Sort of a national point of pride, you can say. They hold a province together by thinking, us and them. There actually are Sorosians there, they like keeping us at least marginally in public sight, but were tools for the unification of the province, not real citizens. The lay progressively blanched as the story continued. Yeah, that sounds really uncool. What do they have to unify against, and why isn't it enough for them to not need excuses? Shinespark stared questioningly at Felicity. Doesn't Garshiva already keep the Empire as a cohesive entity? <laughs> Felicity almost laughed. The other provinces, of course, and also the weather. Why would you want to live in a desert like the eastern provinces when the others exist? If you're an Everlast, easy, because there are more Sarosians everywhere else. And being proud of your province gives an increased resilience to living in adversity, as it turns out. There's no economic utility in being that far east, and as far as natural beauty goes, unless you like rocks or mana storms, you're out of luck. Mana storms? Maple blinked, tilting her head. What are those? Ah, yes, Gerardo chuckled. Don't forget, you're talking to travelers from the center of the world, after all. But have none of you really ever asked what's east of the Empire? Shinespark stopped, then frowned. I don't think we have? Well, that'll make an engaging story for dinner time tonight, Gerardo remarked. For now, though, what say you we get on returning home? I wouldn't want to leave the others out, and we have been gone for an entire day. Yeah, Valet glanced at the harbor, its distant wharfs visible from the edge of the balcony. Felicity, you, uh, you want to come too? Just hang out for a bit? Felicity smiled regretfully. Thank you for the invitation, darling, and I will be coming by in the next few days to help get a look at that crystal of yours, but I'm afraid I've spent quite enough time here already and have some business with Gazelle to- Did someone say my name? A voice interrupted. I could have sworn someone said my name. Gazelle padded out from the entry, looking cluelessly around until his eyes fell on Valet and the others with a big, sharp-toothed grin. It's you! Shinespark jumped slightly, the fur on her back raising an alarm. How long were you standing there? Gazelle blinked innocently. Who, me? Complete coincidence, I assure you. He patted her on the head as he passed by, turning to Felicity and Valet. Marvelous work on that hearing, though, my friends. That went perfectly. Ha-ha! He scooped the two bat ponies, each under a wing, rearing onto his hind legs and lifting them both off the ground in a tight hug. I knew you could do it. Today, get at me later for a little recompense. Let it not be said I promise rewards without keeping my word. A pleasure to serve, Gazelle, Felicity gasped, choking from the tightness of the hug. Of course, of course. Gazelle set them both down, nimbly stepping to where he could see the whole group. Anyway, I already got a little unsolicited thank you together. Not something anyone asked for, but... Ta-da! He bowed the shine spark with a dramatic flourish. I pushed through a pound and a half of paperwork to get your ship designated as the official Iron Ridge Embassy in the Griffin Empire. After our last talk, I figured some additional legal protections would hardly be unwelcome. Embassy standing? Shinespark's ears rose. We have that now? Maple tilted her head. Is that a good thing? Of course, of course, Gazelle lazily purred. Now your ship is sovereign territory that observes your laws, not ours. Any act against it is an act against Iron Ridge, as long as you count it officially as a residence, you have diplomats immunity, blah blah blah. You know what this entails. Our laws, not yours? Valet raised an eyebrow. Gazelle sidled closer, giving a look that only she could see. It was immensely self-satisfied, conspiratorial, and clearly said, I know who you're hiding. Philly gulped. 
I ideally hope it doesn't complicate things for anyone else, Gazelle innocently declared, standing up and pacing away. It's a permanent status, so it would be rather hard to revoke. See you at your next fight in the tournament, and enjoy yourselves. End of chapter 725